Before we give our sermon, we'd like to most sincerely congratulate Reverend Mother Mary Agnes on her golden jubilee, 50 years of religious vows. And I would like to share with you a couple of thoughts about this. I am not saying Reverend Mother is old, but as we get older, there's a tendency to look back on your life. This is a part of the normal psychology of old age. What have I done with my life? What have I accomplished? Am I truly happy and satisfied with what I've done through these years? We speak of this with the high school students sometimes, telling them that you're laying a foundation of groundwork now and your best years are in your 20s and 30s and you get to your 40s and you start to wonder, my better years are behind me and I'm at the top of the hill looking down. That's just normal. But you want to be able to get to your older years and look back and with satisfaction, with happiness, with joy thinking that I did something with my life. I used the talents God gave me, and I really feel fulfilled. Fifty years of dedication under vows, 50 years of dedication to the service of God. What better fulfillment of a life? As we know, religious take vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience. They give up something good for something better. As a religious, Reverend Mother has known the will of God every day. And in her love for God, she's done her best to fulfill that. We know that of all the different vocations we can follow, sacred scripture tells us that the highest vocation is that of the service of God. We're not divided. We could love God without reserve, with our whole heart, mind, and soul. Someone who is married, and marriage is a, a holy and divine institution, and Christ raised it to a sacrament. But as St. Paul says, their heart is divided, pleasing God and pleasing their spouse. But not so with the religious. They can unreservedly love and serve God. And so as Reverend Mother celebrates her 50th anniversary, we congratulate her on a life that has been a great fulfillment. Last night, Father Kazmer was wanting to get Reverend Mother something on behalf of the priest and myself. And I said, don't forget, because I'm not sure if I'm going to be around when she celebrates her Diamond Jubilee in 25 years. When we think of the sisters who have taken their steps, and all the sisters here, we are reminded about what the word love means. When you love somebody, you want to be with them, and you want to prove your love for them. Those of you parents, you know when you have a teeny bopper on the phone, and they're in la-la land with their boyfriend or girlfriend, they can't get them off the phone, the phone is melted to their ear because they want to talk to that person, be with them, and all that stuff. And sometimes young people do foolish things to show and sacrifice or whatever. But let's remind ourselves of this. When it comes to religious loving God, they sacrifice their life. All those temporal pleasures and happiness in the world is put away put aside in order to do something even greater and better, and that is to serve God for the love of God. The sisters live in the presence of God, and they live in, a, in the same house as God. Just a few rooms down is our divine Lord, their divine spouse. The religious life is a life of sacrifice, and with those sacrifices we know that it isn't easy. 
is what they call a dry martyrdom. Day in, day out, having to live a life in common with other sisters. And let's be honest, we all have our quirks, our all faults and failings and difficulties, etc. And it is a sacrifice. St. Teresa of the Little Flower, I'm sure many of you read the story of a soul. She had to put up with a nun banging her rosary beads against the pew every day. And when they did their laundry by hand, this one sister was very energetic and splashing everybody with her dirty laundry water. And St. Teresa made it a point to be right next to that sister. What is amazing is we think of one sister St. Teresa lived. Human nature doesn't change. We're made of the same stuff. We're striving for the same thing, sanctity. It's an amazing thing. It's a slow martyrdom. I remember when I just joined the seminary, I had to kneel somebody, kneel next to one of the religious who he prayed like a robot, and it just drove me crazy. It was very hard to pray when he was praying like this. I like, felt like strangling him. Can't you pray normal? Did, it, did I die? No. Was it aggravating? Absolutely. But that's a part of the sacrifice. A life in common, following a schedule. And that's a beautiful thing. You have your sisters in Christ supporting you, inspiring you, and encouraging you, and you're all doing it together. Out in the world, you maybe make a resolution, I'm going to pray the rosary at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. But other things get in the way, and I'm tired, and I got this to do, and I want to finish this up, and I want to wrap this up, and then maybe you don't pray a rosary, you pray it late, fall asleep, and your guardian angel supposedly finishes it for you. And I want to tell you about that. I've never read any theology book that says about guardian angels finishing a rosary. That's just a, a lame excuse that somebody threw out to put off their rosary until the end of the day. But with the sisters, the bell rings, they go, they pray in common, and what an uplifting thing. And as we know from the book Secret of the Rosary by St. Louis Marie de Montfort, when you pray in common, you get the merit of all those joining in on the rosary. And also we know the sisters have their various duties. And once again, it's not a matter what you do, it's with the love of God that motivates you to do it. St. Louis de Montfort in True Devotion says that our Blessed Mother, because of her pure love of God, gained more merit stitching and sewing than St. Lawrence on the gridiron. What a wonderful thing it is to be a religious you live in a spiritual garden. You have all this opportunities of grace and all these wonderful means of sanctification to become holy. No matter what religious order, congregation, whatever, the bottom line is that in every religious order or congregation, it is a life of perfection, trying to strive to love God and grow holy each day. Didn't matter what you did, whether you taught in school, or you did dishes, or you did the laundry, or you worked on grounds, or whatever. Becoming holy is your main occupation. That is the primary thing that should be, you know, utmost in all religious lives. Becoming holy for the love of God. And the religious life provides you with all those wonderful means of grace. We know that when it comes to conversion of sinners, our Blessed Mother at Fatima said we need to pray and to sacrifice for conversion of sinners. And when we think about this, what a powerhouse is the convent. They live a life of prayer and sacrifice. How many graces are coming down every day upon the world? Sinners under deathbed are converted because of the sisters' sacrifices. 
Sometimes it's the little sacrifices that no one else will ever know. The aches and pains, the headache, the frustrations, the contradictions. No one knows about that but, but God and how pleasing it is to the Sacred Heart of Jesus when sisters are patient and charitable, even when they're suffering and even when they're going through these, these difficult times, and they do it every single day. And that is the reason why we should have tremendous respect, especially for the older sisters who have done this as seasoned soldiers who have fought the good fight and are finishing the course and have keep, are keeping the faith. Sisters, you have many patron saints. Sister Sophia and Sister Cecilia, and got your new names now. And all of you sisters, you have your patron saints that you look up to and are inspired by. And this is the beautiful thing about being a religious. You take a new name to show that you put your former life behind you. Now you have dedicated yourself to a new life, a new spiritual family. And that signifies leaving the world behind and giving your life to God. Let us never forget that God will not be outdone in his generosity. If you're generous with God, you're going to get the hundredfold in this life and a life to come eternal happiness. What motivates someone to become a religious, it could be because they want to secure their salvation. That's a good reason. You're free from all the many of the occasions of sin out in the world, and you have all these spiritual benefits at your disposal. And that's the bottom line, getting to heaven, isn't it? Or you could maybe become a religious because you want to have Christ as your spouse and live for him alone out of that pure love of God. What a wonderful thing it is to have sisters and serving God in whatever capacity, whatever assignments they have. We think of the mystical body of Christ, as Pope Pius XII in his encyclical Mystici Corporis Christi pointed out, the mystical body of Christ like a human body, all having different functions and, and different fulfilling different needs, but all working together in this wonderful organization, the Roman Catholic Church. We have clergy, we have religious, we have laity, all working together in harmony. And how important is that aspect of religious life? After the priesthood, we need religious to draw down graces for souls and to help bring other souls to a knowledge of God. On this feast of our mother perpetual help, I'm sure many of you are very familiar, doesn't need to be repeated, but for those of you who are maybe a little bit new, every aspect of pictures and images of Our Lady have great significance. Our Mother Perpetual Help, her eyes are very large because she looks upon us and is solicitous for our needs. Her mouth is very small because she speaks very little. And as she holds Christ as a child in her embrace, Jesus, with both his hands, grasps our Blessed Mother's hand. It wasn't without real thought behind that, that that picture, that image was made. Jesus holds Mary's hand with both hands, showing his total trust and confidence and love for his Blessed Mother. And our Lord is telling us something. We should also have total trust and confidence and love in our Blessed Mother with both hands. All of us, we know, we all have our struggles with our faults, failings, and sins. We all have this fallen human nature that we're always trying to keep in check, keep a handle on. We know how clever the devil is, and we also know how the devil uses the things of this world to distract us and lead us away from God. And so it is with total trust and confidence that we stay close to our mother. We hold our Blessed Mother's hand with both of our hands, a total love and trust and confidence in Mary, the Mother of God. I would like to just 
remind the sisters, you just finished your retreat. <clears throat> All of you have different assignments and duties, and certainly for the love of God you want to succeed. But remember this, you are a religious first, and then you're a teacher, or you're this, or you're that, or whatever else. I think it's unfortunate when we look over the years how some religious orders have basically shriveled up because the religious lost sight of why they were a religious. Like St. Bernard reminded himself, Bernard, Bernard, why have you come here? What are you doing here? Was it not to serve God and live for him alone? No, they forgot about that. And they became a teacher or they became a social worker, or they took this career or that career, and their career was more important than the most important thing, and that is being a religious. How sad it is to see that. Very, very, very sad. And so let us learn, let us be wiser, let us learn from other people's mistakes. I'm a religious first. My vows... Solemn promises made to God, the constitutions and rule, my map, my GPS to help me to get to heaven, and I need to glory in this, that I belong entirely to Jesus. Jesus is my spouse. Any other work that I do and accomplish, I do the very best that I can. And whether I succeed or I fail, whether it's a success or a failure, it doesn't matter. I've done the best for the love of God, and the rest is in God's hands. We think of St. James when he went to Spain. He hardly converted anybody. But he lived the life of an apostle, a life of holiness, and it was only after his death that he saw the great fruit that he had done. Let us never, ever get discouraged in thinking that what I'm doing is not very important. And does anybody even notice? And does anybody even care? Of course, Almighty God cares. And he's the only one really that it matters. It doesn't matter what anybody thinks, says, or whatever. It's what God knows. It's what God thinks. It's what God sees. And just remember this. <clears throat> After the example of our Blessed Mother, let us serve God with a generous heart. Very soon we are going to be into the month of August. We think of Mary's Immaculate Heart. And whenever I think of our heart of our Blessed Mother, I think of a heart that it was just burning with the love of God, a heart that was given constantly to generous serving of God, a heroic generosity, standing at the foot of the cross, standing at the foot of the cross and suffering in union with her divine son, as the new Eve cooperating in our redemption. Let us never forget either, also I should say, let us not forget that in imitation of our Blessed Mother, we need sisters to remind ourselves, to meditate. I have to reflect the life of our Blessed Mother, her humility, her love of God, her conformity to the will of God, and when people see me, they should see a reflection of our Blessed Mother. Our, our Blessed Mother was sweet, she was amiable, she was kind, she was charitable, and <clears throat> she was, most importantly, generous, because that generosity sprung from her intense love for God. So, sisters, you've finished your retreat. It'll be another year before you make another retreat. You have your monthly retreats, those short little fervorinos, but let's do our best to serve God generously in imitation of our Blessed Mother. And remember, God will never help be done in his generosity. So, Reverend Mother and sisters, congratulations and all those who have taken steps and for all of our sisters, remember to persevere in your holy vocation. St. Alphonsus Liguri, and I'd like to end with this, St. Alphonsus Liguri says, after the gift of the true faith, to be called to the service of God is a singular sign from God that in the eyes of God, you are very, very special. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen.